Thank you to Soccer Co. and Tokyo Treat for sponsoring today's video. Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So today I wanted to revisit another old Genshin drawing where we can redraw it, redraw my fan art of uh, an existing fan art, basically. So we've done one for Xiao before. If you haven't seen the video, I'll put it in a card, I think. Those are still a thing, so I'll put it in a card above. A character that was done around the same time as Xiao was actually Zhongli. So Zhongli... I never really liked how I drew him, but I never liked any of my digital drawings of him. This one I find okay. It's not my favorite either. It's not the worst. I thought we could revisit this one. There's a lot of things wrong with it. I know during the video, or at least when the video was uploaded, I, had, I didn't notice that his eyes were super skewed, but my goal is not to really replicate this one. I kind of want to keep um, a similar vibe in terms of the fan art, but I'm not keeping it the same as in like, we can change up the pose or the lighting, a little bit of the colors and stuff. So if you saw my previous one of Xiao, this one looks fairly different from the other one. I changed up the pose. Obviously the way how I rendered things was a little bit different and I don't know. Uh, I definitely prefer this one a lot more. So um, we're going to start by making a new canvas. I'm just using a 5x7 as my usual. I am also going to go to reference and we're going to open up the reference photo. I just re-downloaded this one so we can keep this in the corner. Just so we have something to look at um, and I can avoid some like similar mistakes that I've done. Okay, another thing I want to talk about so hopefully we can see. I will do this so we have a darker background here. Let me dial it back a little bit. Hopefully you guys can see that. Uh, I want to talk about the tip of my Apple Pencil for a little bit. So I've been using the same nib and the same pencil along with the iPad and the screen protector around all the same time. So that was back in technically December 30th of 2019, but I didn't get the screen protector and technically use it with this Apple Pencil together until January in 2020. So just like a few days after. Um, but I wanted to mention the kind of like time frame just because I know a lot of people are usually curious about um, how many times I've changed the nib. So from January 2020 till right now it's June. So June of 2022. So it's been, you know, around two and a half years already. I haven't changed my nib at all. But right now I can see like significant wear from the two year, like two and a half years of use. Um, so I actually haven't changed it since. I've, this is still the very first nib, so I still have the spare that it comes with. So eventually, maybe this year, I will change it. Yeah, I just wanted to let you guys with an update that this is significant wear after two and a half years. I haven't had the need to change it quite yet. I know some people would change it at this point, but I've seen other people who have more like bald looking Apple pencils where you can see like the metal coming through. I'll probably wait until that point to actually change it. One more thing I need to show you. I know this is probably a super long intro, but um, I was unsure of how I wanted to change up the Zhongli one. So I did a brief little sketching down here. I don't know how well you can see it, but I kind of want to tilt him a little bit more facing to the right. Okay, let's see how can I sketch this out. I need my sketch open actually. I don't know which way I prefer to tilt his head because I could have him face more downwards or I can have him face upwards. So I kind of actually have it upwards. I'll make sure to flip uh, more often. I don't think in this one I probably flipped which is why my eyes are very skewed. I still have the problem with skewed eyes at times. So I know it's out of uh, just habit. Hasn't been that long, but I feel rusty talking while drawing. So in terms of references, I'm kind of looking at this one plus the reference on Game Fashion Archive for now. I will open up his official art in a little bit when we're getting to more of the nitty gritty details, but for now I don't really need it. So, so I know for me, Zhongli tends to be harder for me to draw. I suck at drawing men that are a little bit more like Ikemen. Bijonen kind of esque, 
more like handsome, more manlier. I tend to draw more cuter, uh, younger looking, I guess. Males rather than older, a little bit more cool, chic-ish kind of demeanor. Give him a bit of a higher cheekbone. It's been really like rainy the last few days. It's kind of been sunny uh, today and yesterday though. So I think we had four days of like pretty heavy rain, which I'm always worried about like flooding. Let's shrink him down so we can get a little bit more of his body into here. Now, how I had my sketch is that I wanted the left shoulder, which is technically the right shoulder, but it's left on the page. See, the placement of necks, I always have issues with too, because I don't want his face to look like it's extending too much. Let's give him a little bit of an Adam's apple. So I'm gonna try my best to just take my time. I think I talked about this a little bit in Xiao's video that sometimes the the pressure from having to film uh, my process or like my my drawing progress sometimes very intimidating. I think there's a problem that I had when I was starting out uh, doing more of the Genshin kind of portraits is that I went really fast to knock as many as I could out. Uh, one, because I was enjoying uh, drawing a lot of the characters, but I feel like I didn't really take the proper time to actually look at the character designs as much. I was following too much of like, following too much of like, what the... What is it called? Official art looks like, if that makes sense. Okay, there's another problem that I always had when drawing Zhongli's hair. I never know how to draw this side because he has such a large chunk that covers his ear but also doesn't cover his ear. old one I had his kind of ponytail kind of in the wind so sometimes I give more volume to one side rather than the other so sometimes it looks a little off Maybe I won't put his hand in? I don't think- uh, I don't know. I feel like a lot of my pieces I always try to throw a hand in. One, because I usually like their hands or gloves just to be in the composition, but another one is just like some of them have cool looking uh, hand accessories or like gloves and stuff that I also like to draw. The funny thing is like, I thought that me doing like initial sketch in my sketchbook would help me remedy, like help remedy how slow I would sketch at the first like portion of the video. Guess not. Cause now I don't even like the direction that the hair is going. So let's get rid of this. parts like this. A 
Okay, let's just get the coloring. I spent like 40 minutes on the sketch. Which isn't a bad thing, but I know I'm kind of like fussing with small things. And we can kind of make adjustments as we go if need be. Because I think hair is easier to adjust sometimes by just coloring it in. So before I start to color Zhong Li, I wanted to let you guys know more about Tokyo Treat and Soccer Co. Uh, you can see that this Tokyo Treat box is really filled. It feels really like it's gonna burst. Uh, Tokyo Treat is the heaviest Japanese snack box with 15 to 20 full-size Japanese snacks, including a Japanese exclusive drink, an instant ramen, exclusive seasonal Kit Kats, and much more. It basically has a really big selection of an assortment of snacks, and I can see a lot of flavors that I'm gonna really enjoy from this month's box. While Sakura Ko is an authentic Japanese snack box with new seasonal Japanese treats each month, looks like their box kind of changed changed its color. It's more of this kind of beautiful blue color. This box also includes uh, Japanese teas, cakes, seasonal Japanese treats, and even some Japanese home goods. So this month's box included this really cute yellow sakura side plate that is definitely perfect for a lot of these little assortment of snacks from this month's box. Both boxes come with a 24 page cultural guide and the booklet includes information on each of the snacks including information on allergies and if the snack is vegetarian friendly. Also some useful tidbits about Japanese culture and the production of each snack. Tokyo Treat's theme is Summer Matsuri while Sakura Ko is Tea Time in Yokohama. This month's Tokyo Treat box comes with a Matsuri surprise snack, which you can scan the QR code to check out what snacks are available. I ended up getting the Sakurairo, I guess, marshmallows. My favorites from the Tokyo Treat box that I've managed to taste test up to this point were actually the Cookies and Cream Kit Kat. I really love the flavor um, Cookies and Cream, so I can't go wrong with that. Another one that I really like are actually the mini Ramune candies, which um, I think they're kind of cute because you can kind of like randomly pop one out and then you can read the front side for kind of like, um, I don't know if it's like a fortune or something for the day, but I often get my brother to read it because he can read Japanese. <laughs> Um, I also really like the lemony aftertaste from the Seitochi Lemon Salt Senbeis. For Sakura Ko, I decided to go with cold tea this time. I usually brew the tea um, from each box because I'm really excited to try different teas. And this one I really like the cold. It kind of fits the weather and kind of just like the temperature for the last few days since it's been getting really hot here. I also really like the seagull almonds and the Kamakura Cream Wafers. They were kind of like some of my personal favorites from this box because it's not overly sweet and it almost has like a little bit of a savory taste to them so it really fits my taste palette. Please check out the links in the description or the pinned comment down below to check out Tokyo Treat and Soccer Co. if you're interested in trying out this month's snack boxes. They're also perfect gifts for friends, family, or for yourself and I'm sure that from the variety of snacks you'll definitely find like new favorites or any things that you might have not tried before. Thank you again to Soccer Co. and Tokyo Treat for sponsoring today video. Now let's get on to finally coloring Zhongli. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is duplicate my sketch, save this as a spare, change this to multiply. I'm just gonna warm it up and make it a little lighter. Okay, background color. We do have this, uh, which I don't hate, but I don't love. Now, I could push this side into shadow. Also, his eyes are a little buggy. Now, it, I kind of want the lighting to be on this side. So I'm just gonna quickly make almost like a really fast gradient. Because I think it's a little bit more interesting, at least compared to having a, a flat background. But I'm not here to make like a whole background uh, for this one. I will also put this to be a little darker. We can also do this, where we can kind of make it look like he has a shadow here. Okay, I don't want this to be too dark. It's kind of similar how I did my Tomo one, except for I didn't really add a, like a gradient. Okay, so I will add a new layer and we can start to color at Zhongli. So, keeping the lighting in mind, so let's put in his skin tone. So yeah, kind of doing more 
and the shadows on this side and then we can add I don't know how 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 strong of lighting do we want we'll see because I actually don't know how much I want to have the like the what am I seeing the reflective light and stuff like yeah I'm kind of winging this as we go I guess the shadow's going this way. Sometimes my brain like defaults to certain things. Because I usually put a shadow underneath the chin that usually follows the jawline, going the same way as the the rest of the chin and stuff. Okay, let's darken up the face as much as we can first. That's kind of more necessary. So I'm gonna put this into more red. Right now it kind of looks out of place, but I swear once I add um, some of the other colors around it, you won't notice that I've used a lot of purple into the skin. <laughs> Typical Rembrandt's triangle kind of thing going on here. Kind of more of that dramatic lighting effect here. The amount of portraits I've seen that have done this. I do it a lot too, and sometimes there's a crutch to make the the lighting work out. Full size image. Yeah, okay, he is definitely red. So I'm making it fairly dark here. Also, I like to establish the background just because my background color is gonna affect how I view the colors for Zhongli. Okay, eyes. So his eyes are more kind of like an amber color, but it does get quite red and kind of more brown at the top. Just gonna put a light brown. Let's get more of a yellow. So I'm kind of doing the ships manually. Um, I think previously I would actually add like a multiply layer and this would change to be darker uh, automatically via the multiply layer. So I think in this one I also tried to make the eyes a little bit more similar to how uh, the Genshin official artwork looked like. So I'm still gonna kind of do that in a sense. Just a little bit more subtle compared to this one, I think. This kind of portion of his eyes. But then, yeah, let's do his pupil. Be fairly dark, and then I will use the orange in the center. Just to lighten it up. In a sense, I can see similarities here, which is making me... I don't know. Lucky uncomfortable because they, they still read very similar. I think it's also because of just color choices So I'm gonna keep his hair quite more of a neutral I might do something at the very end to make the side significantly cooler But I might do that at the end because I want to maybe do that with the background and the Zhongli at the same time Yeah, I'm kind of scared to make this too brown so his hair is supposed to be, I guess, black? I'm not too sure. I've seen people do kind of both, like more brown, a little bit more black. Popping in some highlights here. I might have went really dead silent for a few minutes. <laughs> Just know what your effect layers are doing to your piece if you can, so that um, for whatever reason, if you're not able to replicate it, uh, via the effects, you can have a little bit of insight of how to do it without it. I know a lot of people just do stuff willy-nilly. I do the same thing, so it's not too big of a deal. But it's just something to keep in the back of your brain. Just the further learning. See, this is why, like, surrounding colors really affect... Uh, how certain colors read. Actually, I didn't check the amount of time I spent on the Zhongli one. 
because I know this one's probably going to be significantly longer. Especially with how much I struggled with just the sketching in general. Which is also not necessary because the more something's pushed in the back, a little bit more out of focus. We don't really see as much detail. Make these hit the light a little bit more. Now, let me see on Game Fashion's archive. Oof, I zoomed in too much. So it's only mainly kind of halfway down the hair is where it kind of starts to get into a gradient. So I will add a little bit more of an orangey tinge to these. Okay, let's throw in his clothes. I'm gonna deal with the hair a little bit later because I need to transition the highlights a little bit more seamlessly. <laughs> so his outfit, let's roll him around. Gonna bring a little bit of that. Ah. Okay, let me... I'm gonna make this a little bit cooler first so we can have it be more contrasted with the warmth of some of this lighter areas. Silver, silver, so... Yeah, I don't mind making this side much more cooler. Hopefully laying down most of these like base colors and stuff goes a lot quicker. I might push this backwards a bit. His shoulders look like they're collapsing in a little bit, so we'll see if we can push this out afterwards. I do want to make this a little lighter. This side, and then we can make it lighter since it's going to be hit by the light a little bit more. Push this even more. Yeah, this purple right here, or blue that I use, it's almost like a purple. Uh, very vibrant against a hair. It looks almost out of place, so. Uh, yeah, I will see if I can kind of add it into here, but more subtle, I guess. And I feel like because I put it into part of his clothing and stuff on my old one, it doesn't look too out of place, but like on its own, I can see where it, it definitely looks like it's too jarring in my opinion. <laughs> Can't wait to start rendering this. I feel like... Yeah, I spent a lot of time on this already. I feel like the other one probably took me like two hours. I don't know. I, don't, I feel like I didn't spend too long on this yet. Yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of things wrong with it. <laughs> okay, now that we have the majority of the... Kind of like the initial coloring kind of finished. Can kind of move on to cleaning and rendering us like rendering this to a state that I feel more happy with. So before we do that, let's go take a look at my old one and see how much time I spent on it. Because right now I think we're at an hour and a half already. Okay. Canvas information. 3 hours 52, so this is actually closer to 4 hours. So interesting. I thought this one would have taken a shorter amount of time. I'm not sure if it's because I struggled. And here, maybe we're closer to 2 hours then? Oh, we're only in an hour and a half. So, uh, we're doing okay for time. I definitely went faster than I thought compared to my old one 
here. So let's go into here, which is my sketch. I'm going to alpha lock it and we're going to slowly kind of change these sketch colors to fit a little bit more closely to what I want. So I tend to make the skin a lot warmer and a little bit more brighter compared to the rest. Obviously this will depend on how you like to work. So usually when I render, I am basically just kind of cleaning up things, making things appear a little bit more sharp, a little bit more clean. Also eliminating a lot of these sketchier lines. And me changing the sketch color before I render helps me keep it a little bit more easier because I'm making things look a little bit more cleaner this way. <laughs> Okay, so now what I'm going to do is add a little bit of lighting. So, addition, also clipping mask to my merged layers. We're gonna add, I'm gonna add a little bit more of warmer lighting, if anything. So I do want it to read as a little bit more. So what basically I'm doing is mostly like rim lighting. Okay, and then I will add actually a multiply layer to the other side. So I'm going to clip this one, set it to multiply, and I'm going to choose kind of more like a muted purpley blue. And actually, let's make it more. I think even overlay might work a little bit better for what I was trying to do. So I'm actually not trying to darken things as much as I think I want to. So let's actually lighten this up a little bit. I want to add an overlay layer is what I want to do. So what I'm going to do is merge these down. It's a little less intense. Okay, I'm going to make one more layer. Let's clip this and I'm going to add an overlay. So I was going to add this at the very end, but I'm going to add it right now because I kind of want more purpley blue areas in this piece. Just kind of also reflecting this one. And I definitely will add it to my background. So I'm going to add the overlay here as well. Merge that down. I'm gonna merge this down too. Yeah, so now we are ready for rendering and cleaning up. So you can see that Zhongli, just the figure itself, is on one layer and then the background layer is on a separate uh, layer on its own. So let's switch brushes so we can have something a little bit more hard and we can start to clean up. I like tackling the face, uh, but I always try to do places that are a little bit less significant so I like to clean up usually the mouth and the nose first because that's why sometimes I don't post certain pieces and then some pieces that I don't even like I post them right away because sometimes it's just like that high of really liking a drawing as soon as you finish it and then the other time it's you like a drawing but then some time passes and maybe you haven't posted it, but then when it's time to post, maybe you don't like it. Sometimes when I'm working in my studio at the time, like my painting studio or my space where I was drawing, I'm very like, I have tunnel vision basically, a one way track mind. And I kind of just look at my drawing from the same angle from the same distance for like several hours. So you can see I jump around a lot uh, and my brain just kind of goes on autopilot for a lot of the time. Especially when it comes to rendering, if I'm literally just cleaning up stuff. Every time I look at this, I want to add a hand to this one as well. And I don't know why. Because like... I don't know, a part of me is kind of glad I didn't do like a more uh, dynamic pose because I feel like even if I did the same pose as the one that I did my original one in, 
I think I'll still see improvement. Like a significant amount of improvement. But I know one thing that really bothered me is the fact that I made him so uh, front facing. See, like when I go on autopilot, I immediately go to the hair. So let me fix the eyes. I actually forgot to add an extra color into the eyes. Obviously a purple. It's kind of my running theme here. I might want to widen his chin a little bit so you can kind of even out his face. Which I kind of find funny that I, I made an attempt here to try to make his face look a little bit more like, um, make his face look a little bit more, I don't know how to put it, like, manly by trying to make it more angular, uh, which I don't think came up, like, across properly. I definitely think he needed, like, a little bit higher cheekbones and stuff. See, the thing is, like, uh, I don't want to make things look too similar. Because it's when it gets into a weird zone of not looking as natural. Yeah, but you can see what wherever where there was no color underneath. Is there a good... Oh yeah, like right here. There's no color underneath. You can see that the lines didn't change along with um, this area. So this remained purple while this remained um, like kind of like a black. I'm gonna bring a little bit of this lighter color into here. Okay, let me darken up some of these areas because it's kind of getting lost. So, wow. I really don't need to look at his face for that long. Uh, so basically, whenever I'm rendering, I am actually doing mostly just two things. So one is cleaning up and two is making things look a little bit more clear or sharp. So it's just a very much a big back and forth for me just color picking uh, existing colors on the palette or on my drawing, which is why I like to establish a lot of the shadows, um, change the sketch color appropriately. So that we don't have to keep going into the color picker here. Or not the color picker. The color wheel or uh, that often. Because I think that goes a lot slower. I think it's just easier to color pick from the color palette that you have. And it kind of makes your piece a little bit more cohesive. Because sometimes if I see that there's blue on one part of the piece. I will go ahead and just color pick that and use it somewhere else. So that things kind of link up nicely. I feel like I'm going crazy because of that siren. It's still going. Or... No, it's definitely still going. <laughs> Please get to your destination. I'm losing my mind. I already have lack of sleep. I don't need, like, repetitive noises or anything like that unless it's, like, voluntarily listening to ASMR. Make the ringing stop. I'm gonna put a different song on. Maybe putting too calm of a song is driving me up the wall now. See, I don't even know where I left off. But the things I want to draw, other than Genshin stuff, is that I want to finish drawing Yunjin. Um, there's something I want to work for, like a product. Um, that is Genshin related, so I'll hopefully have that for anime fawn and then the next store update. That's not this coming one. I went into total autopilot mode, so if I went on a little montage of me just coloring the hair, uh, that's the reason why. <laughs> I think also, you can tell... When I'm recording talking videos, I probably sound much more- a little bit higher pitch probably. And then a little bit more upbeat at the beginning of videos. And then after two to three hours pass, I'm- my voice goes lower. Probably because one, I'm more comfortable. But then two, I'm tired as hell. 
Yeah, depending on how you work, uh, will definitely depend on what you consider is a good level of finish. Oh, but I think that's where I left off. I wanted to talk about the things I wanted to draw. So there's some Genshin stuff I want to draw, but also uh, OC stuff. So I want to draw Akemi a little bit more. Uh, I also need to make like a reference or like a proper drawing of him because me and my friend are supposed to do an art trade but I keep pushing it back because of freaking deadlines. <laughs> uh, but other things I want to draw are mostly like VTuber related. So by the time this video goes up, I actually don't know what day it will be, but I want to draw something for Ike's birthday. Uh, I want to do fan art of Anna's song. I also want to draw something for Alban's first karaoke stream because I'm super excited. Let's <laughs> keep chunking this out. Because I think even if you saw my Lazulite drawing for their anniversary, uh, that drawing probably like, amount of time i think it was only 13 hours which is kind of shocking because i think i spent 15 hours just rendering just rose at me it's darker so i'm trying not to open up the color pick the color wheel thing here too much because i do think it slows it down a little bit but like I said, I try to use colors that I already have pre-existing on the illustration. Even for some of these lines, I try to make them not as thick. Because sometimes it reads better when it's a little bit more of a thinner line. But also just, I don't want the lines to be too wobbly. If that makes sense. So for the vest part do kind of at the wrong width. Yeah, I think we're done. So I'm just going to exit out. Ugh. So this is the one of Shao from last time when I did a redrawing my own fan art and then here is the one of Zhongli so Zhongli here compared to our previous version I guess okay if I can zoom out a little bit here we go I actually did a lot of liquefying and just transforming of the face and stuff Struggling with his hair. I think I'm okay with his hair where it's at right now. So I don't mind. We looped around his hair going around. Oh, I am really tired. <laughs> yeah, I fixed his eyes several times because I was aligning his eyes too much with this plane, which is incorrect because this isn't supposed to be the top of his cheekbone. Uh, which kind of made me slant his eyes a little bit too much. But yeah, you can see doing basic colors, slapping in all this shading, lighting, all that jazz. This is where I did all the lighting, a little bit of multiply, some overlay. And this is when I merged it and I started to render things together. I might actually have to take a look at his brows. I can see that his brows, I did not keep them very clean. So let's go tend to his brows. Yeah, I think we're good. Uh, so yeah, let's check canvas information. Yeah, I started um, earlier than 12 o'clock. 2 hours and 52 minutes, so that's actually not bad in apparently like an hour less time compared to my old version, which is, to me, is a little shocking because I thought the other one I did take a little bit less time. But yeah, I think that's about it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed watching me redraw, I guess, one of my old fan arts of uh, Genshin Impact's Zhongli. And yeah, hopefully I didn't butcher him too much compared to before. And 
Yeah, I, I, I don't dislike this one. I think it's a lot, I don't know, more refined. And in a sense, a little bit softer than how I used to work. So yeah, I'll talk to you guys next time in the next video. Bye!